Hello everyone, and welcome to the Hogwarts Legacy Deck Dive. Today we're going to take something that could barely run well on RTX 4080 at launch, to something that can immerse you fully in the wizarding world no matter where you happen to be. I have two pieces of news today. First, the 40k subscriber celebration stream will be here on YouTube on Saturday, April 29th at 4pm GMT, which is noon Eastern. Last time was awesome, so make sure you join. Second is a bit of old news, but I wanted to officially announce it in a video in case you missed it. I've officially partnered with Steam Deck HQ to have companion articles published with each video. Each article contains the exact same information as the videos, but is formatted and worded differently for better readability. The articles typically come out on the same day as the video, but a bit later, so definitely check them out if you prefer the written format. I have a lot of good content coming up, including a Stardew Valley modding tutorial, hopefully some hardware modding, deck dives, another entry in the Performance Anxiety series, and even some hardware reviews. So if you like the content, please be sure to ring the bell and subscribe down below. And with that, let's get into testing methodology. Testing was done with the following configuration. A Q3 512GB Steam Deck, SteamOS 3.4.6, Hogwarts Legacy Build ID 1067887, Proton 7.0-6E, Mesa 23.1.0-Devel, and VKD3D 2.6.0-1.3.238. The game file used was my wife Crystal's completed file, with 100% completion. This ensured that we had the fastest broom to stress the deck with, we'd seen every location to know exactly what to test, and we had the most populous overworld. As a note on this, big thanks to her for doing about a million of these benchmarks. There were several mishaps that caused retesting to be needed, and she pulled a few late nights to make it happen while I was parsing all the results trying to make sense of it. Speaking of testing, each test was done by starting in Upper Hogsmeade, following the road north, then west, entering Hogsmeade Valley, getting on the fastest broom in the game, flying full speed near the ground, diving to the ground in the outskirts of the Forbidden Forest, and then running to the Puffskeen Den in the forest itself. The testing brings out the absolute worst in performance in Hogwarts Legacy, with dense crowds, pushing asset streaming to the limits, forcing making a major scene change to dense foliage to flood VRAM, dense particle effects, and dense fog. I've compared the results to just about every other location on the map, notably the southeastern region and Hogwarts itself, so I'm very confident that the performance will be equal to, or better than, the test itself. Now, let's move on to getting a baseline. There's nothing too surprising here, but it's noteworthy that the lows are pretty bad, even after the patches that were supposed to fix them. The low preset can almost maintain 40, but not quite, and the performance is pretty bad by bumping it up to just the medium preset. It's clear that we have our work cut out for us here if we want to play with decent settings, so let's identify the bottleneck. CPU load is pretty high, but it never really tops out, so let's move on. Memory usage is also high, but never really using everything available. And I think we found the bottleneck. Call this Texas, because the GPU is getting absolutely massacred here. I'm pretty confident that this is our bottleneck, but let's check on one more thing, just to make sure. The VRAM utilization could also be an issue, utilizing the entirety of the reservation, so we'll definitely need to look into expanding it and giving the GPU some breathing room. As always, if you haven't seen my Cryo Utilities 2 announcement video, I recommend watching that. The link is on screen and in the description below, and it'll be used for all testing from this point on in the video. Enabling all of my recommended settings in Cryo Utilities 2 and swapping to 4GB of minimum VRAM keeps basically every result within margin of error, but the 0.1% lows are ever so slightly higher and the 1% lows are slightly lower. The one exception to this is the 1% lows on the low preset which took a 12% hit. I wasn't able to replicate this, but I believe it's indicative of the major issue in the game, stutter, so I decided to leave the result in. While we're talking about the wizarding world, do you want to know what I think is the most magical power they have? The ability to teleport, whether it's by apparition, flu powder, or port key. I've spent many years thinking about all the applications of having the ability to be somewhere else instantly, but thanks to today's sponsor, NordVPN, at least some of the use cases for teleportation are unnecessary. First, let's say that I'm playing on my Steam Deck, using my laptop, or even replying to emails from my phone in the local coffee shop. It's entirely possible that my traffic is being sniffed by someone connected to the local network, or even the business itself. 
With NordVPN, you can protect yourself from these attacks by encrypting all traffic between you and Nord, which is just like flu powder, but without the possibility of teleporting to a CD antique shop by misspeaking. They've also been verified by third parties to keep no logs, so you can rest assured that your traffic is kept safe and private. So even NordVPN won't know that you're thinking of cheating on the Steam Deck with that sexy looking ROG ally or 1x player too. If you want to harness the power of teleportation on your devices, then go to nordvpn.com slash cryobyte33, link on screen and in the description below, to get a two-year plan with a huge discount, plus four months for free. You can even upgrade to plans containing the NordPass password manager and NordLocker cloud storage with the same great deal, so make sure to head over to nordvpn.com slash cryobyte33 today. Thank you to NordVPN for the amazing deal, now back to the video. Back on to testing, here we can see that pinning the GPU did very little, even harming the 97th percentile results and the lows on the high preset. It's clear that this isn't the way to go, so let's move on. Next up is Proton GE, which was version GE-Proton7-51 at the time of testing. As you can see, it resulted in much better performance on averages and 97th percentile, but had worse lows on the high preset. I decided that the higher averages are good enough that we should use them for now, so we'll use this as our new baseline. Next up, I wanted to test the performance governor, which is something that helped a lot in Final Fantasy XIII. Unfortunately, since the CPU isn't a bottleneck here, it didn't do us any favors and was a bad choice all around, so let's move on. Going in the other direction, I attempted to limit the CPU frequency to give the GPU a bit more breathing room. I tried a bunch of different limits, but 3 GHz performed the best, and as you can see, it was another unfortunate outcome, with slightly lower results across the board. Here we can see the first positive change in a while, and it's with FSR2. We can see decent improvements to the lows on both presets, and averages on the high preset are 15% higher, almost hitting 30 FPS. It's pretty clear that FSR is going to be a major boon, so let's use this as our new baseline and find a new bottleneck. The CPU is doing much more work with FSR enabled in both the low and high presets, bringing it up high enough to make it a candidate for the bottleneck. The GPU is on a family vacation to Disney World, with both FSR based presets coming in at around 60 to 75% GPU utilization. Going off the high CPU and low GPU utilization, I thought that pinning the GPU lower might help, and I was right. Pinning the GPU to 1400 MHz while using FSR boosted almost every result, with the exceptions of the 0.1% lows on the low preset and 97th percentile on the high preset. The averages on low were within margin of error, but the averages on high finally touched 30 FPS, which is awesome news. Lastly, something you've all been waiting for. Undervolting and overclocking results. All of this testing was done with a Q1 2023 256GB Steam Deck, which got middle-of-the-road results in all undervolting and overclocking. If you want to know how to do this, why it works, or what to expect in other games, make sure to check out my undervolting and overclocking video. There's a link up here in the corner, or in the description below. As you can see, the gains are huge, and you can understand why I rearranged the video order in order to show the other video first. Averages got 33% and 7% boosts, and 97th percentile got 25% and 24% boosts on the low and high presets respectively. The lows on the high preset suffered a little bit, but the lows on the low preset each got a 2-3 FPS bump. Apologies for the cramped graph, but I want to show the difference in performance with full context. Here we can see that we took the low preset from a shaky mid-30s all the way to a pretty solid 40 with normal tweaks, and all the way to the mid-50s while overclocked. The high preset went from a measly 20 FPS all the way up to a fairly stable 30 with tweaks, and a slightly more stable 30 with overclocking. When in a single environment, frame rates tend to be very high, but when moving we drop to near the average, and during fast movement we get the stutter evident on the graph. Based on that and everything else we've seen, I'm confident that the issue we're seeing is that we simply can't get enough VRAM, and assets are cycling constantly in memory. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do about that, and it's a problem even with high-end graphics cards, but I'm happy with the results we have regardless of that. As always, here are some of the other things I tried. It was a lot this time, so if you want to see them, pause the video now. Now that we have all the testing done, let's get into the presets. I have two notes for these. 
First, as mentioned before, there is stutter present when loading new assets. You can mitigate most of it by either walking or flying high up when on your broom. Flying near the ground definitely causes the most stutter due to the highest quality assets being loaded in quickly and constantly. Second, this is the first game where I'll be providing overclocked results. Please keep in mind that overclocking results will vary based on Silicon Lottery, so yours may differ from mine, for better or worse. Every preset will have two options, stock or tuned. Stock is exactly as it sounds, while tune will show whether to favor an undervolt or an overclock. Please let me know in the comments if this system works for you. I'm definitely willing to refine it if it doesn't feel right, or if the section drags on for too long. With that said, let's get into the presets. First up is Battery Saver, where we try to get the most battery life possible while retaining a solid 30 FPS. If you want your deck to last the entire ride from King's Cross to Hogsmeade, use these settings. Next is Smoothest, where every frame is sacred no matter the fidelity cost. If you want your experience to play like it was just dipped in Crisco, then use these settings. Third, we have the Balanced preset, where I focus on getting a good compromise of fidelity and performance by targeting 40 FPS. If you want your gaming to be perfectly balanced, as all things should be, then use these settings. Fourth, we have the prettiest preset, where we focus on getting a locked 30 at the highest settings possible. If you want to experience the full beauty of the wizarding world without booking a trip to Orlando, use these settings. Lastly, we have the docked preset, where we aim for the best 1080p results possible to make for the best TV experience. If you want to play like you're one of those boats that the first years use to get to the castle, but like the other 99% of the time, use these settings. And there you have it, Hogwarts Legacy running much better than stock on the deck, in some cases even rivaling mid-range gaming PCs, albeit at a lower resolution. I'd like to thank all of my patrons, YouTube members, and super thanks donors for the support, and NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to sign up with my link in the description, and if you want to watch me optimize another next-gen game beyond what you thought was possible, then definitely check out my Witcher 3 next-gen update deck dive here. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day.